3D printing is amazing on its own. But once you start diving deeper and spending more time with a hobby, there's this whole ecosystem of tools that's gonna help you make everything a little faster, easier, and also just gonna make the whole process so much nicer. So today I wanna show you 10 advanced 3D printing tools that are really gonna help you get to that next level. These aren't your basic hex keys or bed scrapers. They're a little bit more advanced and also pricey. So no matter if you're already deep down in the 3D printing rabbit hole, you're just starting out and looking for the right tools, there's definitely some good inspiration in this video. The first thing on my list is an electric screwdriver. And honestly, this thing has been a game changer for me. To me, it's just amazing how much faster this is than just using a regular screwdriver. The one I have has three torque modes, which is nice depending on whatever you're screwing in. But honestly, the main way I control the torque is just holding it more or less loosely in my hands. But then whenever the screw is fully in, it just turns the screwdriver in my hand and I know it's ready. So like this, you know, if you're gripping hard, you'll have a lot of torque. And if you're just gripping it very lightly, it'll start turning in your hand super quickly and you won't break anything by screwing it in too hard. As I said, I really love the small form factor and also that it's USB-C powered. Everything that can charge with USB-C is just better faster, easier for me, so I really appreciate that. First, I actually got the electric precision screwdrivers, which are also nice, but I actually don't need it as often. If you're someone who always just assembles and disassembles tech stuff, like phones, laptops, whatever, then this is definitely the way to go. But if you're using it to build 3D printers and stuff like that, then definitely you need the more torque of the bigger screwdriver, and this is the one that I mainly use now. I, of course, store mine in a custom Gridfinity bin, which is really nice, and I also have two assortments of bits. One is just a hundred of them, which is really nice because, you know, you have for every conceivable situation, you will have the right one. But then I just have a single Gridfinity holder where I just store my most used ones because honestly, 80 to 90%, I'll use the same bits and then I don't have to, you know, search them throughout all of the hundreds that I have. So this is a good system for me. Next on my list are these super cool helping hands from Omnifixio. If you know the normal kinds of helping hands that are used for any kind of electronics and soldering project, then these are basically the same, just that I think they're rethinking the whole concept and making it a lot cooler and better. To me, the original version was always a little bit annoying. While yes, still helpful, there were so many flaws with these super long hands that were kind of cumbersome, always kind of tangled-ish or never really, you know, straight, and then it was really hard to get them in the perfect place where they needed to be. With these helping hands from Omnifixio, it's super nice because you know, they're not the super tall version, but they're actually kind of stubby and small, and this makes it way more tidy and everything just stays where it is. Also, I like that everything is magnet powered and you can move it around on the base plate, which is really helpful. So it's very modular, you know, you can place them wherever and you can have more or less depending on what you need. And that way, it's a really nice system. I also like that it packs down super small, which is really nice, especially if you also want to use it on the go if you do something like that. The third thing, and I really love this one, is this mini vacuum by Hoto. I'm telling you, this thing can suck and blow. All right, that sounds wrong. Can I say that? <laughs> All right, I'll just cut that out later. This thing is perfect for cleaning your desk and also cleaning in your 3D printers. For example, I use the vacuum mode to clean up under the base plate of my X1C because there's always filament rests and whatever going out there. So I can just vacuum through that and clean that out, which is really nice. Also then on the other side, you have the pressurized air, which I really like. There's also three different nozzles, which give you different wind speeds, which can be really cool. This is especially cool to get out dust and debris from small stuff where you can't reach easily. For example, I kind of dust out the inside of the printer because also either they get dust gets in there, but also you'll have random filament debris in any of the crevices where you don't want it to be. With this, I can just kind of blow through it and it all gets thrown out and I can collect it or vacuum it up later. Also, if you have other kinds of tech stuff, then this is really cool for cleaning out your computer, cleaning out fans and all that kind of stuff. So to me, it's a really valuable tool that I can use for lots of things. Also, where some people use a pressurized air can, this really works for that. Just that it's also USB rechargeable, but you don't have the risk of it condensating and then blowing liquid into your device. I also like this because of its size. It has its own Grinfinity bin and it's just in my drawer here, so I can grab it whenever I want really quickly and clean something out, clean something off, which really ensures that I always have a really nice workspace. Quick disclosure, this one was sent to me by Hoto, but I reached out to them personally after buying three or four of their other products with my own money, and I just really like the brand for their good design and really good products. The next item is probably the most expensive thing on this list, and it's a 3D scanner. 
personally, I would say this is really advanced and not a lot of people really need it. But if you're the person that designs a lot and needs it, first of all, you're probably going to know. And second of all, it's a game changer. The scanner that I'm using is the Metro X by Revopoint. Revopoint was nice enough to send the scanner to me and I'm really happy to dive more in the whole thing of 3D scanning because there's so much to do and so many possibilities. There's definitely a bit of a learning curve to it. You know, there's different modes and depending on the object you're scanning, you really gotta find your way into it and what are the best settings to do it. But once you get used to it, the process is fairly simple and actually kind of fast. For now, I'm using it for all kinds of different stuff. One way is definitely 3D scanning little things that I want to make grid fin bins for. This way, I have a real 3D version of the thing that I want to insert in the bin and then I can just cut it out, which makes the process a lot more easy and precise in terms of making the bin. The other way I want to use it is to make custom parts, for example, for the handlebar of my bike, which has a really specific shape. So like this, I can just scan it and then model around that scan. Next up is my soldering iron and the kit that I use to make heated inserts into my 3D prints. The soldering iron is a pencil and I really love this little thing. It has so many features, way more than I use, but it has a little display and tons of stuff that you can adjust with it. Personally, I just love it because it has USB-C and heats up insanely fast. I like this because with USB-C I will never lose the cable, I will always have the right cable with me wherever I go, so this is always super nice and helpful. The other thing is, since the soldering iron is by loved by so many people, there's quite an ecosystem of stuff around it that you can buy that will really enhance the functionality. This is definitely a way past what I'm doing with soldering right now, but I know that this can grow with me. The other thing that I love are these heated inserts. I actually got these from the CNC Kitchen website from Stefan, and I've been really loving them so far. Heated inserts are obviously something that is really nice to give you 3D prints more quality because if you're just doing threads in the 3D print, these will wear out super fast. With heated inserts and then having the thread in there, it's a lot more durable and a lot more high quality. These come with a bunch of different adapters, so they fit on most of the normal threads that you're going to use. And as you print more and more advanced filaments, a filament dryer is something that you should really consider buying. If you're mostly printing stuff like PLA, you're probably good, as PLA doesn't really draw in that much water. Other filaments like PTG, TPU or even nylon are way more sensitive though. This means that if you leave them in the open, the filament and thereby the print quality that you can get out of them degrades really quickly. This is why in my last 3D printing tools video, which you can check out here, I talked about vacuum bags and sealing your filaments so they stay high quality. So while you still should use vacuum bags, even if you have a filament dryer, there's two things that it's really important for. The one thing the filament dryer does is if there's a filament that has gone bad because you've left it out to open for whatever reason, then you can put it in the filament dryer and get it back to its original state here. So if your filament has drawn too much water, there's pre-programmed settings for most of the standard filaments where you just put them in and then also can check out this table here to reference how long you should dry it out. I usually do this if a filament starts printing badly so you can see it by lots of stringing or lots of bubbles when the, all the moisture just boils off while printing. The second use for a filament dryer is that for many high grade filaments, it's actually recommended to print them straight from a filament dryer. This ensures that it's already at a good temperature to be printed and will just enhance the printing process and give you better results. While most of these filaments I figured I could still print without directly printing from a dryer, it did actually affect the quality. So you know, if you're spending a lot on a high quality filament, then you might as well print it in the best conditions and that's where you'll usually need a filament dryer. The next thing isn't strictly a 3D printing tool, but I still think there's a lot of worth in it. What I'm talking about is an air purifier. As someone that works in the same room as all of his three or four 3D printers at this time, it's really important to check your air quality. All these printers emit a lot of fine particles, and I definitely don't want to breathe all of that in. And while I try opening my windows a lot to just get some fresh air in, but it's still really good of having a secondary solution with the air purifier, knowing that my air is actively getting clear. My air purifier also has a particulate sensor, which is really nice because it shows me the air quality if I want to open the window to get some extra fresh air in, or even to base automations on it and automatically turn on the air purifier. While this is great for 3D printing, also something like pollen season is coming up, and if you're someone that's affected, this is definitely a great tool to, you know, kind of ease the pain. Another one of my favorites is this hot glue gun by Hoto. 
I really like this one because you guessed it, it's USB-C chargeable. I think it's really cool because it has this really nice design with an inbuilt battery that you can just go around and use it whenever. And it's just really nice on tons of project, whether it is gluing electronics in place or just fixing something temporarily. A tool that's really interesting because I don't use it that often, but when I need it, it just saves me is a rotary tool. Personally, I bought a Dremel, but there's also tons of other ones. I even saw one that's USB powered and maybe I'll get that next but overall there's so many uses for a rotary tool there's tons of different attachments for example i recently used the angle grinder attachment to just kind of cut something off that was stuck this was a metal part of a 3d printer and i really couldn't get it off any other way other than that you can use it to drill to sand and so many other ways so this is really a tool where you can do a lot with it another thing that you can do is you can 3d print little tips for it and then use these to friction weld these are a little tricky to get to use but once you actually have it down this is really cool because you're friction welding and like that, it really fuses the whole new print together. The last tool on my list is so cool to me because it's so different from all the other ones. Well, pretty much all of the others are some technology gadget kind of things. This is just really good old school engineering. What I'm talking about is the Metmo Multi-Drive. This little roughly pen-shaped tool has tons of uses for it. And the cool thing is also for me, the build quality. This thing is just perfectly made. And that's one of those things where if you use it properly, it will probably last you a lifetime. The attachments I can use this with is a file, a blade. You can use it as a pencil, as a scribe, or even as a precision screwdriver. I like having this in my little desk drawer because, because of the many, many things that it can do. It's a tool that's always pretty useful. As I already talked about the build quality, it just feels super high quality and that also makes it great using it. The multi-drive was sent to me by Metmo and I really like their overall concept in general with just doing older, more engineering based products that really, really put a focus on quality. They also have tons of other stuff, so check out their website. And also right now, they have a Kickstarter for that fractal vise. For me, this looks really interesting, especially when building more and more stuff. So hopefully I'll get one of those to show them to you in a future video. So now that we're through my list, let me know in the comments down below which tools I'm still missing or which I still need. I know there's always more fancy stuff to buy and I'm really looking forward to your opinion. Also, if you want to buy any of the tools that I mentioned, there's links in the description down below. And if you do that or buy, you know, new filament or a 3D printer through any of my links, that really helps me and the channel out. So thank you so, so much. If now you're wondering what to watch next, you should check out this video that I made about my more basic 3D printing tools. And this is just the basic kit that I think most people should have. And there's so much good stuff there that really helps. So check out that video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.